Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Crooked Climb. Today's episode, surprise, you're sedentary. I'm Suzanne Taylor, CEO of the Tailored Consulting Agency. Hi everyone, I'm Denise Stegall. I am the CEO and curator at livinghealthylist.com where our goal is to make sure that you're getting those honest, reliable, and unbiased information in health, wellness, personal development, and bringing some fun into life. <laughs> uh, well, I'm so happy to have this conversation with you today, Denise. This is something we talk about all the time. And yes, I want to just start off with an amazing, amazing little number to wrap your heads around. Um, caveman, way back when, 3,000, what, 10,000 years ago? I don't know how many years ago, but caveman moved about 3,000 minutes per week. 3,000. And today in our industrial I guess since the industrial revolution, we move less than 300 minutes a week. So just wrap your mind around that a little bit. And since the advance of technology and computers and add that in working from home, we're sitting even more. So exercise is not sufficient any longer for you to avoid that sedentary lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. Sitting is the new smoking, they say, right? Um, and activity versus being busy. Uh, we have a great article that uh, we're gonna share with you guys after the show, all about the blue zones. And those, if you haven't heard of blue zones, they're the areas around the globe with the longest, um, mortality index. So people live the longest in those areas. Mm -hmm. And they really dove into the reasons why. Um, Denise, what were some of those reasons that were listed as, about why they live longer in those areas? There were a, a couple of different reasons, and the regions around the world are very are really unique. They're very different from one another. Um, but things like um, what they eat, um, their diet is a big part of what they believe is um, contributes to their longevity. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there's a woman in Okinawa, which is one of those blue zones. You know, she's in her 90s, and you know, she goes to the the local place uh, by her, and she does dancing. She does local dancing or or, uh, traditional dancing. And the woman is in her 90s. Um, so diet is a big part of it. Um, movement is another part of it. Hello, move it, move it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy in Calabria that they talk to, and there are several of them in, in, in these areas. So it's not just a one-off thing. Like there are a number of people in these areas, but this particular man, he believes that his longevity, um, as do the experts believe that his longevity is really from walking to and from his, uh, his olive fields and tending to the trees for his entire life. So he leaves in the morning, he goes and he walks to the, to the fields, he works in the fields all day, walks home. So he's constantly moving. Um, same thing in the blue zones in Costa Rica. Uh, they believe that, you know, one, again, it's a diet and it's all local food. So, you know, we think local, we go to the supermarket and, and that's kind of local. But for people in these areas, truly local is what grows in their region and they farm those or they pick them from the trees. Um, so it really is local in a very, very specific way. Um, really different from what we think of as local. Um, interestingly though, um, so right now I am in uh, on the big island of Hawaii and on Wednesday, they have an, an amazing farmer's market here. There are lettuces and greens that I've never seen before that wow. they have here, that they grow here, that if we, we went to the supermarket at home, we probably would pass over them because we've never seen them before. So movement is a huge, huge piece of what uh, they, we believe that um, keeps people, uh, keeps their longevity, um, but also that diet piece, that local diet. Yeah. And it really is a combination of both. Um, 
I wanted to, I, I did a little research, you know me, I love the, the, the statistics, um, which is really funny because back in the day, I was never the statistics person, but I really, <laughs> really like the statistics. When you mentioned about caveman, 3000 minutes per week. Okay, guys, get that around your head, 300 minutes, you know, okay, fine. Think of it this way. That's 50 hours, 3000 minutes equals 50 hours of movement. Again, if you think of what I just said about the people in Calabria and Okinawa and Costa Rica, these people are always moving versus what we do here in the, in, in the industrialized world, uh, that's five hours a week. So compare five hours to 50 hours. You yeah. can see where you know, we really are lacking in that movement area. Well, that's, that's a 10x of your movement, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so to me, that means that mm -hmm. even if, if you are exercising for an hour, seven days a week, and you're sitting the mm -hmm. rest of the time, that's not good enough. You're nope. still leading a sedentary lifestyle. And that's right. kind of the bubble I like to burst for people. Mm -hmm. You know, exercise is awesome. I'm a huge fan of exercise. But if you're sitting the rest of the time, if you're if you're sitting watching TV at nighttime and you're sitting on your computer all day at your desk, you mm -hmm. are still living a sedentary lifestyle. And it's really about that constant um, movement. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to actually explore the magic pill theory of movement and exercise. And that magic pill of weight loss and well-being is really movement. But I want to I want to challenge people to think of exercise and movement as a well-being tool, not a weight loss tool. Yes, you might lose some weight if you start an exercise program, but I've known many people who will eat a whole, you know, big piece of chocolate cake and then they work out for an extra hour thinking mm -hmm. that balances things out. And, yeah. you know, that's another myth I'd love yeah. to bust. You can't out exercise a bad diet. No, I'm, you cannot. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but. Um, we'll have to find out because they yeah. were so right. Yeah, it's, it's so right on. And I, I, I want to go back to some research from uh, John Ratley. Um, he tells us and his, his research shows that exercise and movement on a continual basis is like taking a little bit of Prozac and a little bit of Ritalin. Um, in other words, it's mood boosting, focus boosting, magic pill. How cool is that? That, mm -hmm. that exercise and continuous movement actually fights depression, anxiety, and as an entrepreneur, I'm always looking for those hacks to help me increase my focus and my drive and my energy towards my work. So um, I, I really wanted to bring that home that it's, it really is a magic pill and it can't just be 20 minutes once a day. It really has to be that continuous movement and yes. don't do your cardio too close to bedtime either. That might keep you up. Keep you awake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting what you just said um, about um, the average American uh, is active less than 20 minutes a day. And here I go back with my statistics. So this, these are a couple of facts. And I just, I just Googled these uh, right before we went on. Awesome. So, you know, we talked quickly about, you know, is sitting the new smoking, you know, and how, you know, we're, how inactivity really is detrimental to our health. So if we want to improve our health, we really need to start moving and being more active. Yeah. So the facts here from uh, just a couple of them, over 25% of American adults sit for more than eight hours every day. Suzanne just said, you just said that, wow. Wow. Um, but really that's a quarter of us, of, of American adults. So are they considering adults from 18 and over, you know, it, at mm. 18, what you have a very different life than kids? we do, right? A lot kids of kids are sitting more and more mm -hmm. than ever before. Yep. Video games, TV. I mean, you turn on the TV, there's a hundred million one channels. So you don't need to move. You can just watch whatever's on TV. Mm -hmm. It also says, and this is, this is, this is research from 2019. So, so pretty recent 44% of people do not get any exercise at all. Wow. And we wonder why we have an epidemic of obesity and cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And, you know, this, this wasn't, I wasn't going to 
plan on, I wasn't planning on throwing out this statistic, but the, the number one injury uh, for people is, is lower back injuries. And do you know how that lower back injury typically happens when you're bending over to get something out of the trunk of your car, whether it's luggage or out of the back seat or groceries or whatever, and you bend halfway over and you reach out in front of you to pull something heavy towards you to lift it up. And, and that movement is a functional movement, which I do almost every day with exercise bands to keep that area of my body strong. Because I know that that injury runs rampant in my family. And just that little, that little extra boost of training that motion, you don't even have to add weights to it. So I just wanted to throw that in that if you're, if you're going to be exercising, whether it's 20 minutes or five minutes, once an hour, that's ideal. Five minutes, once an hour, do something. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. So, you know, that low back, you know, so many people have low back pain problems. And I think it's one of the, one of the number one things that actually keeps people out of work, um, which is really bad for the economy, for businesses, (laughs) whether you're a small business or a big business. Um, And one of the, the main reasons why people have low back problems is because they have weak um, abs. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not talking six pack abs, but I'm just talking, you know, being able to, you know, stand straight. Um, and one of the exercises that I I found myself like sucking it in and standing up straighter, you know, Mm -hmm. just, just bringing awareness to that part of your body, you know, makes you stand up a little straighter. Right. And I think that's, that's an important piece. You know, we meant, we mentioned functional movement and, and I know we have a, uh, an episode coming up that we're going to talk a little bit more about functional movement because so many of the exercises that, that we do today, um, if we go to the gym or we do a boot camp, really are they're not functional movement, and actually they really um, take your muscles and your joints beyond where they should be going. Yes. Um, which is why, with a lot of those course those those programs, there's a lot of uh, a lot of injury. And done it twice, hurt my shoulder twice. Actually, fell and got a concussion one time too. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, but those are things you know we think, you know, we want to lose weight. And again, you know, exercise isn't just about, it's not about losing weight. Yes, that's part of it. Um, but when we do an exercise, we start an exercise program, we need to make sure that we're, we're starting where we are, not where we want to be, you know, sure. I would love to be, you know, a CrossFit tough person. Yeah. I'm not that person, you know, I'm lifting 20 pound weights, not 400 pound weights. So really part of that movement and get starting to think more about what we're, how we're moving, um, is, is important, you know, take it, start where you are. And then, you know, as you progress, well, imagine, imagine if, you know, just doing that five minutes, once an hour, you know, setting a timer on your phone and mm-hmm. doing that five minutes of something once mm-hmm. an hour, you don't have to work up a sweat. You don't have to get your heart rate up. You could literally do plank for a minute. You could do a couple sit-ups. You could do a couple push-ups, mm-hmm. or you could just get up and walk around your house. If it's too cold to walk outside, get up, walk around your house, go up and down the stairs, do a couple squats, couple lunges, make your do squats while you're blow drying your hair, like I do. You know, anything to add in that extra movement. Um, mm-hmm. You know, park your car far away. Um, and take the stairs, you know, just those little extra things can really mm-hmm. make a big, big difference at the end of your week. Oh yeah, your absolutely. Active minutes. Um, so all of those benefits of movement, boosting your mood, better focus, better sleep, better digestion, and a clearer, more rational mind with less up and down emotions. Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but that <laughs> sounds feel to me. Um, I'd love Denise for you to add in your tips for people to get moving more often. I I think they're awesome. And you're going to want to get out your pens for this one. Okay, everybody, it's time to get to move it, move it. Mm -hmm. If I could, I'd play the little video for you guys. I love that little guy, the little lemur who sings. 
but it really is about, again, it's about moving. You know, we always think exercise, but we want to get moving. We want to get up off our chairs, start moving around. Um, but we also have to think about, think about it differently. It's not, oh, I got to go and work out. No, it's, we need to adjust how we think about um, moving and how we can enjoy a workout. If you, if that's what you want to say, you know, you need a weird workout. And I say that myself, cause I can, I can be an, a bit of an over, uh, exerciser, especially when, I, when it's cold and I'm at home, I have my treadmill, I have my elliptical, I can get on there and just kind of mindlessly start, mm. you know, moving, which again, if I've been sitting all day, I, part of me thinks, Oh, I got to do this, but am I doing the right thing? So it's really about how we think about it. So it's part mindset uh, for sure. And then it's practice you know, okay, you have to think about what you're doing. And I'm a big planner. I love to plan out what days I'm doing, which exercises. Um, so if you're a person who likes cardio, you really can't do cardio every day. So you can plan cardio three days a week. And then what are you going to do in those other days? Um, is it yoga? Is it weightlifting? Um, and weightlifting, uh, especially for women 40 and over, 50 and over, uh, we really need to add weightlifting into our uh, routine not saying that you need to be lifting really heavy weights, but we do need to start uh, to start lo- uh, lifting weights. Well, I love so- I love that that you're saying variety, mm-hmm. and you know, doing something different every day. You know, changing that muscle memory, changing that mm-hmm. brain pattern, um, mm-hmm. really can help you stay in better mental shape as well as physical. So I love I love that. Absolutely. And you use different muscles. That's the other mm-hmm. thing that's really important. You know, I mentioned about core, you know, there are so many exercises that, um, that you can do that are working your core without actually sitting down and doing crunches. So I read this, um, I love this, I, you know me, I love articles. And I found this article from the disease prevention, um, office of disease prevention, and I'll add the links uh, into the chat in a bit, but, and it really talks about what, what are the five factors that keep people excited about their exercise or their movement. And first and foremost, it's, do you enjoy it? You know, if you don't like it, you're not going to do it. And it doesn't make sense to go and, you know, struggle through a workout or an exercise program. Um, I know personally, like, I don't like to, I, I, I don't like all the hot sauna thing. So all of this hot yoga and hot cycling thing. That's really, I love that. I love that. See, I can't do it. So for me, for you, you would love it. And you would, you would um, Mm -hmm. really continue to do that myself personally, if I I could, I could do it once and I would hate it and would never want to go back. So you have to pick something that you enjoy. Um, But also another piece is being efficient. Um, Know what exercises you need to do, what they do. You know, sometimes you go to a gym and there's all of this, um, this, these machines and you have no idea how to use them. Mm -hmm. Either if you don't know how to use them, don't use them. Ask somebody who, you know, who works there if you're at a gym, um, because if you don't know how to do the, do the exercise properly, you're either going to injure yourself or you're really not going to get the benefit of that. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, I've done that before. I've gone to a gym and gone, oh, okay, at a hotel and gone, oh, this is kind of interesting, you mm-hmm. know, and I do it one way and then somebody after me does, you know, gets to, onto that machine and I'm like, oh, I did that totally different. <laughs> So that's important. Oh, you're one of those that I see at the gym doing something weird on a piece of equipment that it's not made for. You know, that happens all the time. Yeah, no, I know. That's me. Totally. But I think, you know, I'm there, so I should use it. Um, But if I don't know how to use it, it's really not uh, beneficial. Yeah. Um, Another thing that's really important is, you know, get your family involved. You know, we need support. Um, Go out for a family walk. Um, or, you know, a hike on the weekends, you know, whatever it might be that, you know, you get everybody else involved, because the more you get them involved, the more you stay interested. Uh, yes. And that's really the, the, the whole thing, you know, we, we want to be healthy, we want to make sure that our family is healthy. But also when we're exercising, we don't need to be just alone with our headset, you know, in a gym or on the treadmill, it can really be social too. And I think that's a, a really uh, important piece. Um which brings me to this piece where accountability, mm-hmm. you know, if you're doing this with somebody else, you know, and you just kind of, I just don't, I just don't feel like it today. Um, you have no reason, but you just don't feel like it. Having that other person say, oh, come on, get off the couch. Let's go. Let's just go. Let's just do a 20 minute walk. That will increase your um, enjoyment. 
Absolutely. It'll keep you moving forward. Well, you actually um, said something about scheduling your exercise that that mm-hmm. stood out to me because I do that as well. So mm-hmm. I, I put in my calendar, whether it's a yoga day or a weight day or an elliptical day. Mm-hmm. And that kind of holds me accountable. I'm not saying work doesn't get in the way sometimes, right? but when I see that on the calendar, it, it's like a mm-hmm. self accountability. So I love that. Absolutely. And, you know, I always say about my calendar, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, Because I know in the past, if it's not on that calendar, I can just kind of, oh, well, I have Mm -hmm. something else that I can do. Um, So that, again, that's where accountability comes in also. Um, But I think what's really, really important is, is the fact if you make it a daily routine, make it part of your routine. And that's where the calendar comes in, you know, kind of check out what everybody else in the family is doing, see what, you know, where you can find some time together and do that on a regular basis, you know, whether it's outside, um, you know, um, taking a walk or a bike ride, whatever it might be. Uh, But of course, simple things like, you know, if you're, you know, take the stairs instead of the elevator or the escalator, not that many of us are doing that right now. Um, but those are little things that you can incorporate in your day that um, will increase the amount of activity uh, that you're doing. Well, I noticed one thing, you know, I, I wear a, an aura ring that keeps track of my sleep and my steps and heart rate and respiration and all that. I, I geek out on statistics. And one of the things I noticed when I got my standing desk is that I move a lot when I talk. And I'm actually stepping forward and backward. Mm -hmm. And here's the statistic, which is crazy, that sitting at my desk for my normal six-hour workday, I move about 3,000 steps. Hmm. That's amazing. Standing at my desk for a six-hour workday, I move between seven and 9,000 steps. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal. Well, and oh my gosh, that is a huge difference. No wonder yep. I feel better on those yep. days. Yep. And you're not even thinking about it, which Correct. is really important. So yeah. um, we, we, have, we need to wrap up a little bit, but there are a couple of things we still want to, uh, to talk to yeah. you about. And um, this is, uh, and Suzanne, this is something that I know is important uh, for you, is finding that balance. Mm-hmm. Talk, a, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, you know, we talked so much about food in our last couple episodes and really exercise is the same. Sleep is the same. All our future topics are the same. Um, Too much of a good thing can actually be as bad as too little of something. And my my little joke for this is just like Goldilocks. It's all about what is the right amount for you. You know, finding that perfect bowl of oatmeal or the perfect mattress or the perfect chair. It's the same with finding the food that's right for you, finding the exercise routine that's right for you. Moving five minutes an hour is right for me because I'm working from home right now. I can dance for five minutes. I can do push-ups for five minutes. And if I do that once an hour, awesome. So it's about finding the right amount for you. Um, And that's really what I wanted to leave everybody with the gist today. Um, So every week there's another diet, another lifestyle, another workout program for you to follow. Same with personal growth. And you can spend hundreds of hours and dollars on these programs and still feel stuck, still not know what to do. What you need is something simple, easy, focused, and actionable. And those components can maximize every aspect of your life and business. Denise and I call that nourish, move, and be. So we'd like to thank all of you for joining us here. We are about to go into our live session uh, where we can go deeper with you, our audience. Um, There you can ask your questions, um, interact with others, and receive some love seed coaching. Uh, So right now, if you would, please turn off your video uh, camera until prompted once we go into um, the live section. And then as soon as the join now button pops on your screen, we will see you over there. So we want to thank you so much for coming uh, and being with us on our podcast. I'm Denise Stegall uh, at livinghealthylist.com and Miss Suzanne and I'm Suzanne Taylor King uh, from the tailored consultant agency.com. 
and we will be here next uh every second and fourth friday of the month at uh 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. That was 2.30 on uh, Central Standard Time where I am normally. And uh, nourish, move, be everybody. <laughs>